Hi everybody, this tutorial for ProBuilder 6 is going to be focusing on materials and texturing for ProBuilder. So we're going to keep it pretty basic here. There's some more advanced UV editing we'll show in a different tutorial, but for now, keeping it simple there. So with a ProBuilder object, you can actually use materials just like anything else. So if I drag and drop this material right onto here, it just applies, no big deal. Uh, however, one of the best uses of this of Pro Builder is that you can apply materials per face. So if I select this bottom object, activate the edit mode, then I'll select the top face here. That's the only one that I'd like to have this wood planks texture on. I will drag drop onto the selected face and then when I deselect so you don't have the highlight in the way, you can see it's applied just to that and I still have the grid texture on the others or actually the grid material on the others there. And I can do the same, let's say, to the other parts. So I'll select just this face in the center here. I'd like to have this on that and I'll use a quick action to select the invert, so all the other faces, and I'll apply this last material there. Okay, so materials are applied per face as we wanted, but of course they look pretty terrible right now and we're going to deal with that. That is the very basic UV editing or texturing, you might call it, that we're going to do here. Uh, first of all, on this, on the wood planks on the bottom here, and all these are uh, just images I quickly picked up from some TF2 textures, really, really missed even level design and mapping for that. Uh, anyway, they're great, always good for quick tests. If you go to the tiling section on the material in the inspector, a quick hack is just to set that to a different number, really. So in this case, I'm setting the tiling. Uh, oops, I put that on the detail input. Well, there's a mistake. If I made it, now you can see, so you don't make it. I want to make sure I do that to the, the main input up here, to the tiling. So setting it to tile less is going to make the texture appear larger, and that's probably good enough for the bottom. If I don't need to get more complex, then, you know, why not? Just leave it like that. Okay, so then I'm going to actually do some real texturing or UV work on these other areas. I'll start with a central uh, brick and plaster area, so I can select that, and then I'm going to want to really, I guess, scale and move this around a bit so I have the placement of that texture that I want to have. So we're going to have to kind of uh, open the scary door just a little bit. I'm going to go to Tools, uh, Pro Builder, Editor, and then the UV Editor. So with this open, you'll see a lot of stuff going on. Just ignore it for now. We're going to look at the very basic usage of this, which is quite useful, but um, kind of requires ignoring a lot of the other parts because there's a lot going on. Okay, so what I want is for this single texture to kind of fill this entire space. If I zoom in on the center here, you can actually see right there that is the texture in the center of the UV space. And I'd like to take this piece. You can also see that highlighted here, green with the blue inside. That's what I want to fit to that. So there are a lot of actually pretty good automatic solutions. I find they're a little more complex actually than just using manual for some cases. So I'm going to just say, take that. And since we're doing a fitting action, I'm going to convert it to manual. And now it has that orange color. And I'm going to say, you know what, just fit that. So I can just do a quick planar project, I'll drop it down there and hit fit UVs. And it's going to fit it right as best it can, kind of like fitting an image, it really is, to that. So now if I look over here, I'll deselect. You can see it's it's pretty well filled it up. I'd say that's good enough for now. I don't need to get fancy at all. Uh, actually, why not, just since it's a tutorial. So two ways I could modify this a bit more. I can use the tools here to uh, move, rotate, and scale that if I wanted to. Or I can turn on this button up here, and now I actually have tools and they'll correspond up here with the tools you have in the in the scene view. I can use this to directly control it, move, rotate, and scale right here in the scene view. So that's really nice and useful if I want to line it up quickly and easily. I'm just going to undo those changes because it was honestly pretty good before. So I'm going to leave uh, just leave that alone. I think I'm pretty happy with it. You know, just to be a little better with it, I'm going to move it down slightly so that that edge kind of lines up on the bottom. Okay. Perfect. So let's look at the other side. Ooh, I just hit save and I'm getting a spinny on the mouse that might've been danger. Uh, okay, seems to still be alive. All right, over here, a bit more complicated. Um, I'm going to, again, convert to manual. I just, I kind of prefer that. 
It's uh, one of the more predictable ways of using the UV editor I found rather than the, the auto. Again, planar project it, just give it a nice flat thing and fit those UVs. So now it's fitting. Again, you can see top to bottom right here. And that looks pretty good. I just now actually I just want to take that and apply it to the others. So I'll select this. I'm going to hold control and then click on the face next to it. And you can see it just kind of unwrapped itself right across. And I'll continue doing that on the other parts. You might be able to see, and it might help to notice how it's basically building itself out along here. So as I have that one in orange selected, and then I hold control, click here, you can see the next piece has been added on there. And if you're familiar with UV mapping or uh, unwrapping cardboard boxes, you can kind of see what's going on there. It's just uh, unwrapping itself right across. So just like that, pretty good. I'd say that's really what I was looking for the here in the tutorial here. We'll show a few more things just to be safe. Uh, the top isn't looking great. I can actually I'll just do the same thing. I know I'm kind of cheating here, but that's the idea in game dev. Keep it simple. Control click each time and it just unwraps it right over. So it looks great if I turn off this in-scene tool so I can get back and then exit the edit mode. Laptop is running a little slow right now for some reason. Okay, so looks good. That's all I wanna do to it, but um, let's show a little more because that felt just a bit too easy. I do want to mention a few things that you can use on the on the UV editor there. So I will, I will create just a new shape to use for that. And let's just draw right onto the surface here. All right, so a little bit about auto UVs because they are useful and they are actually the most the most basic option. So again, I'm going to um, go into edit mode on this and then let's look at this. And so by default with the Pro Builder object, all the UVs are set to auto. So what this means is if I select all or any, it's showing it's got that blue interior and it says UV mode auto. And the result is as I move any faces, you can see the UVs pretty much just stay right there and don't change unexpectedly. So by that, I mean, you can see this uh, grid texture on here. It's not stretching or skewing or doing anything crazy. And it even works pretty well if you have angled faces and such. I have a very bright light on in the scene, so we can't see that. Let's, uh, let's turn that off real quick. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key and turn back on draw modes. Let's go to unlit so we can see that better. And now the other part looks terrible, but that's fine for this. So yeah, as I was saying, um, let's set this back here. Um, it kind of just takes care of itself pretty well, even as you're doing, you know, let's just take this and extrude it and inset it and blah, 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 blah. It, you know, works pretty well. So that's auto and that generally works well. You can do a few basic things with that. So let's uh, say I just take this face right here and there's tiling so I can change the tiling on that quick and easy, just like I showed you before with the material there. And of course I can also change, I'll go up to this face here maybe and just set a different offset so I can very quickly move things around or a rotation. So you can do some quick and simple things like if it were just setting you know, this to 90 degrees for if you had a, a wood grain that you wanted to, to kind of go along the side of something or make sure a, a poster was oriented correctly. There's some quick and simple solutions you can use there. And that's what I'd recommend sticking to when that manual solution I just showed doesn't work. Because this, the benefit of it is, so as I continue to work with this, those are gonna, you know, do their best to look correct. You can see some of these are going a little crazy now. It's doing the best it can, which isn't always great. Um, versus if I took this, because it's in manual mode, the result is that it will not try to update at all. So that's good and bad. As I move it a little bit, it squishes, seems okay. As you move it more, you can see it's really starting to get odd, right? This has become sort of diagonal slanted and it can get even much, much worse if I went this way or something, right? So you've told ProBuilder in this case, totally manual UVs, I'm controlling them, it won't do anything, and that means the texture gets a little, a little odd. So pros and cons to each. Again, the manual mode is what I prefer to just keep things really simple and have no surprises. But the automatic mode is great when you're not worried too much about, um, about the results, really. You just want it to tile predictably, kind of like the basic grid texture does us down there. Okay, cool. Well, again, this was just a pretty basic intro to texturing materials in ProBuilder.
The overall idea here is really just to make sure you know what's possible in general, and then you can still look up some of the older um, the older tutorials for ProBuilder on UV editing and texturing, and they'll work as long as you're just looking at the UV editor because it hasn't changed, unfortunately, yet. Uh, okay, and that's it. Enjoy. Hope this helps a few people get started doing some texturing and material work in ProBuilder. One thing, I want to show one thing else actually. Uh, if you go into Tools Pro Builder Editors, there is a material editor. Where did that open up? Different monitor. Okay, here we go. This is really useful if you have a lot of materials you're using often. So it's a very similar, real quick note, to the vertex color editor where you have a palette that you can change and set and you're setting colors. Uh, oh, I should have shown that. Actually, as a quick demo, just to remind you, um, you know, no, not going into more things. No vertex colors on this. We already did a, a tutorial on that. Okay, so anyway, you can take materials that you're using often and drop them into the slots here. And then you can also apply shortcuts to these or just use them to quickly select an object, apply something, apply another thing, etc. So quick way if you have some materials that you're using very often and similar to the vertex color palette, you can create multiple palettes. You can pick materials if you can't figure out, uh, for example, what is exactly on this face. You can say just a match selection and it's gonna pick it and then you can also use that to then apply, just sort of a quick apply from this one right here. So a couple neat solutions. I'll have more info on those specifics in the documentation. I don't think they're super important for this here, uh, but just so you know. Okay, great, that is really the end of this tutorial. Again, just to give you a quick overview, get to know what you can do with the system, and then we'll go further in future tutorials. Okay, thanks a bunch. See you in, in those.